Okay. You have it all four combinations double clear, <clears throat> double smoked. The depending on whatever side, it doesn't matter. One of each uh, for the front being smoked or the back being smoked, and the front being clear and the back being clear, or whatever, vice versa. But the fun part is each of these have to be taped off and then seamed down the middle so that I can do a white and a green. Yeah. But when I put LEDs to it, then it's going to tell me if I'm going to like it or not. Um, I was thinking the white would look better because the outside of the car is white. Um, I'd rather tie in some white to the interior than green because the dash piece is green, but maybe it'd look better with green. I don't know. So I'm doing this. So, yep, that's the inevitability, which basically turned it into, I didn't even think, you know, I quadranted this off. These two were technically different, but when you put the paint on there, it technically kind of flattened out the surface. So it basically made it as if it was shadowed or smoked or not. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably go with the white or the green on this and then shine the LED into it. I don't have green LED to be able to shine into it. So um, I, I'm, I'm gonna try to figure something out and I got an annoying cricket, so sorry. A couple things are changing around here. Um, I'm getting my hands on a 3D printer. Uh, so it, it's not, it's more of a DIY 3D printer. It's not some big industrial $4,000, you know, badass printer, but and the, the bed on it's kind of small. I don't think I can 3D print just this. But I've been trying to teach myself how to do this. How to do the 3D printing process. And that's what brings me out here. I've got this basic, the two-piece ring. I've got it sliced. I've got rods where you can put little, uh, like, eighth-inch dowel rods in it. It's got the holes already drilled out. And those uh, will, uh, like, basically you'll dab some glue and then squish everything together. And it'll hold it together really nice and tight. But what I'm trying to figure out is the rain ring. Uh, it'll be a ring that'll basically encompass everything but about this much of the bo bottom right here. Uh, that hole's drilled off. It still fits, but it's a little off. But it'll come around about right there all the way around, and it'll be notched out so it'll kind of sit in there really nicely. Um, those I can print in one piece, but I don't think I can print because of this right here sticking out. I think it just barely sticks out. I will find out. If I can, I'll just weld everything back together, no big deal, and go from there. But what I came out here to do is put the speaker in it and then see how much the speaker sticks out the back so I know how big to build the rain guard. printed half of it. As you look here, lines up perfect. I got all that right. Now where I failed was the thickness of the rim right there. I guess I typed in quarter inch, not half inch. So fits up there fine, but there's not enough room for it to screw to. See? Not enough room. I printed the rear bracket or the upper but sideways I guess because it sits in the car like this it's all kind of funny how it sits now I was under the assumption when I looked at it that even though you turn the bracket like this there was symmetry behind it 
that this hole would be in the center of these two holes. It's not. Um, let me show you. This was the original one that we printed. And when I stuck it in the car with this, um, I actually just printed the base right here just to see if it lined up, see if the bolt holes lined up. And I went to the car and they did not line up. These two did, but the top one didn't. So, I mean, that's what prototyping's for, and it's take time. So, we do it this way. Oh, I just misaligned them. So you can see, maybe, how just a smidge in the hole was moved. It had to be moved down at a, at a funny angle. And when I did it, I also gave a little bit more tolerance right here to strengthen that hole up. And I put these in there. Uh, they perfectly line up to the holes on the speaker. I've also, uh, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, I've got this, these holes toleranced. I can't remember what steel rod I have, but, or aluminum rod for actual metal rods. But I went ahead and cut it out, cut out some pins. Now they don't fit right now because there is a little bit of extra material from where it melted a tad bit and kind of, but uh, I'm going to sand them down, see if we can get them to fit. together. Um, once I got it, the dowels in place, it was easy. This just clicked right on there. It was actually pretty nice. Surprising. But you can see, see, and it's actually not that much that I need to mess with. Uh, so I'm going to start tapering it out. See. Another thing that I must address is when I built these and I show them in the DIY, I built them with an LED ring. Now to get the LED ring on here, I was like, oh, well, I could just do a slip fit where I print it all out and it's slip fit over it and you glue it on. That's a pain in the butt. I don't know why I was even thinking that. I'll just simply do it where it has the same bolt holes as this and it sticks over the top. You drop the speaker in, throw the screws in, you're done. Simple. What? Really, it's that simple, and it'll shine right across the speaker and on the speaker grill, and in theory, it'll glow the speaker grill. Theory. Uh -huh. Theory was right. Fits good. It's loose because I haven't tightened it. But yep. Um, and what I'm going to do, the back, the rain guard fits really nicely, but again, it's the top that's vacant. So I'm going to cut one of the rain guards with a piece missing out of both sides of it so I can reposition it. And then when I print this ring, I'm going to print it where the rain guard has a slot all the way around it. So that, no matter whatever I do, um, the rain guard can be positioned. So I can stick it in here, mark the top, put the rain guard in it, glue it in, and it'll be good. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Yeah.